Hey, it's Dr. Brad, and 2023 has been a huge year for space and astronomy. So check out my top 10 stories from the year. Coming at number 10 is the first 3D printed rocket. Now in the future, one of the big goals is to live in space and use things in space. And that means building rockets and satellites out of material. So 3D printing is gonna to have to be a huge part of that future. What Relativity Space showed is you can do it. They 3D printed essentially all of a 100 foot or 30 meter rocket and actually got it to take off. Now this is the first step in them actually reaching orbit using this technology and something we'll be definitely be watching over the coming years. At number nine, the discovery of supermassive black hole gravitational waves. Now gravitational waves are ripples of gravity that travel all through space. For about a decade, we've been discovering them from colliding smaller stellar mass black holes, producing ripples that hit the Earth. The nanograv experiment this year announced the discovery of a very weak signal of gravitational waves from supermassive black holes. These are the things that weigh millions to billions of times the mass of our sun. Now to do this, they actually use a really cool experiment using pulsars. This is a kind of a dead star that spins rapidly. And they almost used them as lighthouses across space and monitored as these waves traveling through our galaxy hit these cosmic lighthouses to detect these ripples in the fabric of space-time. This is a huge leap in our understanding of black holes and one that was exciting for 2023. At number eight, we saw the launch of the JUICE mission. Now, I'm not talking about oranges here. I'm talking about the Jupiter Icy Explorer mission. This was launched by the European Space Agency, headed out to the moons of Jupiter. Now, it's going to take quite a few years. It won't reach there until about 2031, but when it gets there, it's going to study a number of these moons, like Europa. These moons of Jupiter we think are rich in ice, we think maybe have water oceans. JUICE is going to do multiple pass-bys of these moons, studying the crust and what lies beneath, seeing are they really the exciting worlds that we think exist in our solar system. At number seven is another exciting mission, Psyche. Now, Psyche was launched by NASA to the asteroid Psyche. Now, Psyche is about 230 kilometers wide, and it's one of the largest asteroids in the asteroid belt. Now, what makes this quite interesting is this is a M-type asteroid, one that we think is rich in metals. Now, the current theory is this was maybe a protoplanet, a baby planet, and that planet broke apart, and this is kind of the core of that baby planet floating in space. Now, what makes it exciting for the future of space is that it has lots of nickel, iron, and other rare metals. And we think this place could be a huge source of resources for our future space exploration and also give insight into how planets are formed and what's on the inside of planets like our very own. And number six is another asteroid mission, this time coming back to Earth, and that is the OSIRIS-REx samples returning back to Earth from the asteroid Bennu. Now, OSIRIS-REx visited Bennu a few years ago and used this kind of vacuum-like thing to blow on the surface and scoop up a lot of this sample rock. It then left the asteroid, made a return journey back, and parachuted those samples in the Utah desert earlier this year. Now, the samples have already started been studying and shown that it really is some of the earliest material that we have in the solar system. Because Bennu is a type of asteroid that we think is almost this loose pile of rubble, one formed from the leftover bits of our solar system. So by studying Bennu, we can get a lot of insight into the stuff that was present there. Now, at the same time, Bennu is also part of a class of asteroid called the Apollo Group. And the Apollo group of asteroids are ones that regularly cross the path of Earth. And these potentially pose a hazard to Earth, i.e. could crash into us. So by studying Bennu, not only do we understand the solar system's beginnings, but what these things are made up of to inform in the future potentially how to defend ourselves. We've reached the top five, and this is going to Japan with two missions being sent to our nearest neighbor, the moon, this year. Earlier this year, we saw iSpace attempt the first commercial landing on the moon. Now, while not fully successful, this laid the groundwork for a lot of things that we're going to see in 2024. Make sure to catch that video coming out soon. Japan also launched the SLIM mission. This was by the Japanese Space Agency. And this is the test mission to test precision landing on the moon's surface. So both of these missions are paving the way for a lot of future activity in the moon, both by the US and other countries, both happening by Japan in 2023. 
Now, I could make a whole video of James Webb Space Discoveries, but we've only had a couple here, and at number four is one from it, and that is the discovery of the most distant supermassive black hole. Now, we know of supermassive black holes all across the universe, including in our own Milky Way galaxy. But the James Webb Space Telescope spotted one at 570 million years after the Big Bang. Now, the universe is 13.8 billion years old, so this is really, really, really far away and really right after the Big Bang. The other thing that made this black hole special was it was actually relatively small. Now, most of the supermassive black holes we find are billions of times the mass of our sun. But this one was only about four, four and a half million times the mass of our sun. Now, still really large, but very near the size of the one in our own galaxy, Sagitt Sagittarius A star, which is about 4.1 million. So by finding a relatively small, supermassive black hole in the early universe tells us a lot about how these things formed, when they formed, and how they grow into the behemoths we see today. At number three, we finally saw the long-awaited launch of SpaceX's Starship. We actually got to see this twice this year. Now, a lot of people say, hey, it didn't fully work, but to SpaceX and a lot of us, it was a big step in their getting this rocket to work with a completely new way of doing business and opening a new future of space exploration. What makes Starship so special is that it's not just the biggest rocket, it is not just the most powerful rocket, but it's one that's gonna be used going in the future to carry lots of humans and equipment and people to the moon and eventually to Mars. And we saw their first two tests, one that actually did reach space. Now, again, they didn't fully work, but it laid the groundwork for them getting that up and running. And I think in 2024, we should have some really cool stories from SpaceX and Starship. At number two, what I think is the biggest potential discovery from JWST, and that is of potentially finding dimethyl sulfide in the atmosphere of an exoplanet. Now, Kepler, or K218b, was discovered by the Kepler Space Telescope, and it's been known for a while to be a, what we call a sub-Neptune planet, something smaller than Neptune but bigger than Earth. And these planets are common in other solar systems, just not our own. Now, K218b is about eight and a half times more massive than Earth, but we, people have always kind of called it this cotton candy-like planet because relatively big with a very puffed-out atmosphere. So JWST spotted it and studied it in a lot of detail, discovering things like carbon dioxide and methane in its atmosphere, which aren't entirely surprising, but still exciting, and a potential hint of dimethyl sulfide. Now, what is dimethyl sulfide? It is a compound involving things like carbon as well as sulfur. And on Earth, the only place that creates this somewhat stinky molecule is in plankton. Yes, this is essentially plankton fish farts. That's what we're getting excited by. Now, it doesn't mean it's aliens. It doesn't even mean it's real or not some other process. But it was a huge hint at something potentially really big in our galaxy. And the biggest story of the year, no one's going to change my mind on this, goes to India. And that is the landing of Chandrayaan-3 on the south pole of the moon. Huge for so many reasons. Firstly, fourth country to successfully land on the moon. First country to land at the South Pole, where everyone wants to go to, including the future Artemis missions. The way they did it, they had a failure with Chandrayaan 2 a few years ago, didn't stop them. They rebuilt it in only three and a half years for half the price and got it to the moon and nailed the landing. It worked for over two weeks. They got samples, ticked all of the boxes, and was a huge step, not just for India, but all of our exploration around the moon. And in fact, it's Chandrayaan-1, India's first mission, that really showed there's a lot of ice on the moon, which kind of created this rush to the moon in the first place. So without a doubt, India is the winner, I think, of the huge moment in space in 2023. Now, that was my top 10. Maybe I missed some. I would love to hear what other ones that you think should have been included, or what was your favorite? Was it India? Was it something else? please post in the comments below and make sure to stay tuned for what is going to happen in 2024, both what's upcoming, what I think may happen in a future video. Make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with space news.